Hi everyone, it's Maureen here with an exciting episode of Making from Trash to Treasure. Today I'm really excited because I'm doing something which is going to be loved by so many little girls and especially my granddaughters. So I'm really, really thrilled and excited to make. I'm sure you must be seeing a little tiny house in this picture. And this is a house that I had made for my granddaughters and they enjoy playing with it. Believe me, this was made out of a washing machine box. So we can do so much. And today we're going to go step by step by doing fantastic things with things inside our house which are laying around and maybe sometimes you even throw them. A lot of boxes come in and we just throw away those boxes. A lot of bottles get empty and we throw away those empty bottles. So today we're going to really make magic. So are you ready? Let's go. So, okay. So it's going to be a little tiny house that I'm going to be making from the things around the house. You don't need to go and specially buy material for it. I am absolutely sure you all have all of those things with you. Well, this was a cotton which came to my house from a delivery guy and I saved it and I'll cut it out. So if you see the shape I've cut, now who doesn't drink coffee? This is a coffee jar of a very famous brand and I'm sure you guys have this or any other glass jar that you have. Why we want glass? Because we want the light to come through it. So that's why I prefer glass jar with a lid that we can screw on. Yeah, a lot of people are going to ask me that why aren't you giving exact measurements? The reason is that I want you to explore in the house and see what are things that are lying around in the sizes. You get the idea of what I'm making over here and then you can translate into the things that are available for you. So you're not restricted to my measurements, but I will give you an idea. You will see step by step how I'm going about it and then you can absolutely translate it with whatever you have in your house. So what I had is a piece of box that I cut it out and then I drew this you know freehand I just drew this out and cut it out. These were the areas which were folding so I put some duct tape over it so that I give it a little bit of strength. Then I measured the opening mouth of the ball of the this cardboard and then i measured the jar why i need to do that is because i want the jar to go through and that i'm also able to screw it on and secure it there we go and then i will be able to secure okay so that's what we are going to start with right now we don't need to put it in as such but first we need to make a platform for us this is the back side, but you know me by now, I need uh, even the back side, I want everything to have a nice finish to it. Although you can leave it the way the box was, but I like, I cut it, I painted it black. Then I went along and cut thin strips out of the same box. Now, these are going to be our legs that we want to have all around that we give because the lid has a little bit of depth which is about an inch so we want to give the same kind of height so that our platform is steady when the house is standing on it so we're going to put these so we cut these strips about an inch thick Now that our place is all nice and secure and we have a nice platform, what we will do is we will insert our bottle and I want this to be my front, the front of the house. So 
Now, the other things that I have already gone ahead and I've cut some pieces. What you need is a little rectangular piece measuring to the jar that you are going to be using because you want to put this as a rooftop. So I'm, I measured it according to mine. Mine is coming to, I'll just tell you, it is coming to about nine and a half inches long and about five and a half inches wide and then I fold it in in the center. I've made a little rectangular indentation here and cut it out and then I've made a triangular for the window and I've cut that out. Now to make my roof secure I cut two triangle pieces and cut the round circles from inside to just add to it a little going inwards like so that makes our roof and then we're going to come on top and so if you see this look how beautiful how cute it looks already and we still have a lot of work to do on this but it looks really pretty so I'm going to, it doesn't matter which side you're going to put front, but since I've made this my front and I want, now who doesn't recognize this? This is a cylindrical which we come in the toilet rolls or the kitchen roll. This one was in my kitchen roll and I saved it. So I want to make it like a chimney and I want to put it here. So my hot glue gun. I just if you even if you don't do that that's fine but uh, I just wanted to give a little platform to my chimney so I put cut a little circle there go and if I could show you the front you can see it looks really pretty why I'm calling this a front because I've given a little more space on this side we need to have the little window that we gave here we need to give it a little bit of a platform and then we will put the roof on top. Okay, so we have to secure, we're going to put the chimney, the rooftop on top of the chimney. Okay, now we need to add steps so that you can see the three steps. Okay. Now that's our door and we made a little opening for the window. Look at that, that's beautiful. You know, it's such a beautiful project that you can do with your grandchildren. They will love it. What we need to do is, you must be seeing that I have cut out a lot of pieces. Now we want to get the effect of bricks on the roof and on the chimney and all. So we're going to start laying our bricks. Now I'm not going to go inside the area, I think that's good enough for us. And now what we need is napkins. These are left over from my decoupage projects because they are uh, layered napkins and you always take out the layers. I never throw away the layers that I take off. Sometimes it is four ply, three ply or two ply. So you just need the upper side, the design side for your decoupage project. Always leave, you know, save these napkins because they are so handy. They come in for so much, so many of your artwork that you're doing, just like this one. And I'll show you today what we are going to do because we want to secure all of our work area and make it look beautiful. 
and before we start with the paint and all the other decorations. So for here, what I have done is that um, I'm going to be, uh, this is just white glue, uh, PVC glue or white glue or school glue that you uh, use for all your artwork. I am going to cut, it, cut these into, you don't have to be very uh, perfection with, with the cutting, you can just be uh, roughly cutting it all because what we need to do is to secure our uh, worked area and put these on top. So I'm just roughly cutting the edges. No, maybe I don't need so many, but it's always nice to have a few extra than just the right amount. Okay, so my glue is ready. I'm going to start gluing the area. So we are back with the magic of uh, camera. I went off and did a little bit of finishing of uh, this uh, tissue paper all around. You can see I've covered the whole base and I've covered the roof and the front and all the, the chimney and everything. Now here, because it's all wet right now, I would have to use a little bit of my uh, air dry. Uh, hot air dry and somebody asked me that what is the setting uh, my air dry gun comes in only one setting so i don't know if there are other in the market which have different settings i just put it on hot which is um, i switch it on and it's the one setting it, it comes in so um, i'll try and find in the market if there are other things available or not but here we go It is still wet but uh, what we do is you know, I have to do some other parts which has you know have to put in the boundary and all so maybe we can start with that and also because now I'm going to be using liquid glue so I need to make the fence so we'll put this aside a little bit and so it starts drying on its own and we'll make a little fence now we've all done fences when we were drawing as little kids we i have these popsicle sticks and uh, they are naturally you know they make it a little wider on one side and thinner on the other so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep it crisscross like that Okay, I'll leave it on the side here so that I don't disturb it while I work on my. There you go. Okay, now what I will be needing is just to make a little boundary around. So I need my airbag clay. Okay, there we go. So here we've done our boundary wall but I want to make a little flower bed here so I need a little more of the air dry clay and I want to give a thin layer where I will be putting my flowers and making a little garden. Why I'm doing that is because I want to stick in all these beautiful flowers and shrubs that I've cut.
Okay, now the fence that we have, we're going to put it around. I think we can just put a little bit of glue on the edges of our fence and then stick it inside. You'll put it on both sides and then I will stick it inside. Okay. And then the same for the other side. There we go. Now I can start painting but before painting I want to put in my my shrubs and my so that I don't have to paint those areas. What we need to do is decorate our door a little bit and our windows. Okay guys, so I'm going to leave it here for it to dry naturally because I don't want to expedite the process. This is part one, so stay tuned for part two. Do subscribe to my channel so that you get the notification for part two and we'll do the paint and the finishing touches to this. Believe me, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be magical. So till then, bye.